for the next few days and for about the next month there is a fantastic opportunity to actually get a feel for the movement of the solar system, to get in touch with that constantly spinning wheel within a wheel that we all live in, and yet many have lived their whole lives without even being aware of it. The ballet starts at sunset on the 11th of July 2010, the date of the new moon. You know it's a new moon because there was a total solar eclipse. Now the Earth orbits the Sun in a counterclockwise fashion in the same direction that all the other planets revolve around the Sun. Those blue lines in the background there, those are the orbits of the other planets. The Earth also rotates in a counterclockwise fashion while it's doing this, and basically what that means is that everyone on Earth gets to see the same planets at the same time of night essentially everywhere on Earth. Well, let's go back to sunset and dusk. So the Earth spins and the Sun sets. What do you see of the solar system? Well, firstly, you will see Venus. Brilliant white Venus, unmistakable, third brightest object in the sky. And then as twilight deepens, firstly, you will be able to see Saturn to the left of Venus, and then the somewhat fainter Mars will become visible between the two. Now, over the next few days, the Moon's going to idle past all of these planets in turn, and that makes a great marker because everyone can identify the moon. And so after that, all you need is the day to be able to identify which planet the moon is close to. So tomorrow is the 13th of July 2010, and the very young moon will appear between Venus and the sun. On the 14th of July, the moon will be real up close to Venus, and that's going to be a beautiful sight to see the second and third brightest objects in the sky, one above the other. The day after that, the moon is right underneath Mars, and on the 16th, it will have somewhat passed Saturn. So if you've lived your entire life without being able to identify a planet, now's your opportunity to identify three of them. Now let's take a look at what's going to happen to this menagerie of three over the next month or so. That is, until they are again visited by the moon. Firstly, Venus is going to climb higher and higher into the sky, as will Mars. Well, at any rate, compared to Saturn. Now, on the Moon's first visit, the apparent order of these planets was Venus, Mars, Saturn. And a month later, when the Moon revisits them, the order will have changed to Saturn, Venus, Mars. So not only is this a chance to find these planets, it's a chance to feel their movements as well. So let's take a look at this from another perspective. The Moon, of course, is bloody close. It's merely a quarter of a million miles away. The sort of mileage you could get out of a good car. Venus is on the inside track, and that's going faster than us. And Mars is on the outside track, and that's going slower than us. We are being caught up by Venus, and we're burning off, albeit slowly, Mars. Saturn is a very long way away, and effectively static compared to the rate that the Earth orbits the Sun. Saturn, I should add, is an incredible gem, even in its lesser moments, which is when the rings are almost edge-on, as they are at the moment. So what's the smallest scope you would need to see Saturn's rings with? Well, I recently got one of these things, a, a first scope, for 35 bucks, just to try it out. And yeah, I tried it yesterday, and it will show you the rings of Saturn. And if it will do that, it will easily show you the phases of Venus over the next couple of months. It'll show you detail on Jupiter and the moons of Jupiter. The scope is small, adequately mounted, it's light, and the eyepieces are satisfactory. In terms of bang for the buck, as a starter scope, it delivers the goods. However, for those who want to take things a little more seriously, in a week or two I will be putting out a guide to help you get a scope that will better suit your purposes. Until then, look to the western sky at sunset and enjoy a front row seat in the ballet of the solar system.